and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Melissa, the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RBA located in Richmond, Virginia. Today's project is this big, beautiful secretary along with a brand new transfer being released by the Bells and Whistles line at Dixie Bell. As always, before you begin, you need to clean your piece. I was super lucky for the secretary, that middle part in the inside just popped right out. I cleaned the entire piece inside and out with white lightning. White lightning is a degreaser, a deglosser, and amazing for cleaning your projects. Don't forget to clean behind where the hardware exists on your project. Then rinse everything with warm water. I could tell by the tannins that were left over on my paper towel when I was cleaning that this project was going to be a bleeder. What does that mean? Well, that means if you do not prime your peas with Boss, I'm using Boss in clear, that the tannins could possibly bleed through your finish. So prep is best. Make sure to use some Boss in white, gray, or clear. I also used my Dixie Bells mud to repair a couple of small areas of missing veneer. And then we're ready to begin. Introducing a brand new transfer. This is Vintage Post. I'm going to combine it with some beautiful neutrals to make this secretary shine. Since I removed the inner part of the secretary, I definitely wanted to dress it up some. I ended up using my gel stain in walnut. This is going to condition the wood and give it a new color. It was a little bit dull and a little bit yellow, so this warm brown neutral will liven it up. I love using no paint gel stain. This is a product that's oil based and I like to use it on top of existing finishes. So you don't have to sand back your projects before you begin. You can apply it as thick as you would like, one coat or two, and it takes approximately 24 to 48 hours to dry. So I plan on blending a lot with my Best Dang brush, which is a natural and synthetic brush, and it's a little bit pokey. It's a little bit of a stiffer brush. So to ensure that I'm not going to pull back my paint, I came in and added a full base coat of French linen. Once this French linen has dried, I can come in, add my ombre colors, and smash them all together. And then I can use my water and my Best Dang brush and not have to worry about any of that paint pulling back. I also came in on the sides of the drawers and did the little dovetails. So while the exterior of this piece was drying for that initial first coat, I decided that the interior was going to be wood. I still didn't like that orange color, so I came in with my applicator pad and my walnut gel stain just to darken it up a slight bit. I didn't even seal this gel stain after I was finished, I just applied one even coat to darken the base. Since I plan to add that beautiful new transfer to the desk part of the secretary, I decided to paint that as well. So I came in and painted that base on the drop down piece. This will enable me to paint it a solid color or an ombre blend and then add the transfer over top. So the plan is a neutral ombre blend. I'm gonna start off with coffee bean around the edges as my darkest color. This will be technically my second coat, but I'm gonna smash it around and add in a little bit more layers as I go along. You're gonna see me work in sections so I can blend the paint while it's still damp. 
I'm also going to be spraying my besting brush with water from my spray misting bottle. So keep a separate brush for each color. The next color that I'm gonna to add to the piece is Gravel Road. I'm gonna put that around the coffee bean so that when I blend the colors together, it's gonna to give me a nice shaded edge. Since there's a wood carving on the front of this door, I decided to darken it a bit as well so that when I do put the lighter color on top, it gives it a nice shaded area around all that small detail. Next up, we have French Linen. This is actually really great neutral. It sits right on the border of gray and cream. So it's always a really great blending color. I use it a lot. Again, I'm gonna come in as my next deepest, darkest color, kind of going around the edges. And then of course, drop cloth will go right in the middle. When all of these colors have been deposited onto my piece, I'm going to dampen that brush and swirl in little circular motions and blend that paint together. I get a lot of questions as a brand ambassador for Dixie Belle about ombre blending. Ombre blending is really simple, you guys. It's a very simple process of just blending like-minded colors together to create a kind of faded look. It's nothing really crazy, it's nothing really spectacular. I used to do it more so with a separate brush for each color and gently blending them together. But as you can see here, this brush, this best dang brush, just allows you to get the most perfect, smoky, cloudy finish. So you see me hold that brush quite low to the bristles. What that's doing is giving me a little bit more control when I hold the brush. I always start with the darkest part of the ombre blend. This way, as you move inwards to the lighter color, you're not really contaminating that brush because that natural bristle brush holds a lot of paint in it. You'll see me wiping it off down below off camera. I have some paper towels down there, so I'm just wiping off the excess amounts of paint as I go along. So this is kind of like the simplest way to do an ombre blend, if you ask me. The best dang brush, small circular motions, keeping everything damp and blending on that second coat, Trust me, when I say that anybody can do this, I really, really think that anybody can achieve this gorgeous, smoky look. And as a beginner painter or an advanced painter, this effect saves time. <laughs> it used to take a lot longer when you had to go in with your separate brushes, with each color, and gently blend them together. This is like the cheater way of getting an ombre blend. Give it a try. Trust me. I'm sure you'll love it. Make sure to keep your brush dampened. I'm not talking super wet, I'm just talking a slight spray so that it doesn't drag and pull your paint too much. You feel your brush start to pull against the piece of furniture when you need to add a little bit more water. You'll also see that your paint kind of clumps up a little bit differently. It's not a smooth motion. That water is the tool to keeping this paint blendable. Remember, this is Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a water-based paint. So using the water really keeps it smooth and blendable. So normally I would speed this video up, but I think keeping it in real time is gonna show you really how fast this look is achieved, but also how this look is achieved. Sometimes when I speed up the film just to kind of show you the stuff fast, you miss the process. So I know that this part is taking a little bit long, but I think it's helpful as a learning tool for you to grasp this technique.
I then continue the same ombre blend around every single part of the furniture. I like to work in sections. So the bottom section, the side section, the drawers a section. This just keeps things kind of neat and tidy when it comes to blending your paint. So are you ready? Are you ready to meet this brand new transfer from Dixie Bell Bells and Whistles? This is the Vintage Post Transfer. I'm going to open it up and show you every single page. I'm going to try and use as much of this transfer on my project as I can. Inside every tube of Bells and Whistles Transfer, you're going to find an instruction sheet, which is helpful and handy if you've never used a transfer before. You're also going to have your small burnishing tool. The new ones in these transfers say Dixie Bell. They're really super cute. You then have your amount of images inside the tube. This particular tube contains four image sheets. The print is very vintage, it's very neutral, kind of looks like a newspaper, which is why I chose a neutral background for this piece of furniture. So the plan is to cover the front of the secretary with this transfer. I'm gonna cut it up and apply it so that I can get it to fit perfectly. So for those of you that have never used a transfer before, you can see the white backing paper that holds the transfer with the image. The image sheet on the back of that translucent sheet is sticky. Now, I find that these transfers are not as sticky as the other ones, so what I'm going to do is actually hold it up on this vertical surface and tape it down so it doesn't move. Using the tape to hold your transfer sheet evenly is always helpful. Now that I have my transfer placed where I want it, I'm going to use the wood burnishing tool to adhere the transfer to the piece of furniture. Make sure when you're doing this that your paint is thoroughly dry. It's recommended to wait 24 hours before applying a transfer to your project on top of any painted surface. Make sure to burnish those edges down and work in small sections. I like to always pull from the top and move down. At one point in this video, what happened was my sheet actually got too long of the piece that had been released and it started to fold over onto itself. So I recommend cutting the plastic if the sheet gets too long from the part of the transfer that you released. You're also not pushing really hard with that stick, okay? This is a gentle process. You're just pushing that image off that sheet onto your project. You can use these transfers on glass, on metal, on painted surfaces, whatever your little heart desires, but it is not recommended to put transfers over top of any wax at all. Transfers do not like wax unless you're using wax to seal them. Never use wax before you apply a transfer. Using the tape to hold up my image sheet was super helpful. As I moved along, I just moved my tape kind of down the line. But once you kind of get it stuck up onto the top, it's quite easy to hold. It's kind of more of the initial stick on factor, getting it on there, making sure it's laying flat and not slipping and sliding anywhere. So use painter's tape if you've got it. So here's where I started to feel like my actual piece of plastic was getting too long. It started to fall down and it caught in one spot. So I made sure to then cut it and work in smaller sections as I went along. I applied another sheet of transfer to the left-hand side and then did the same thing kind of in the middle, but just with cut up parts, enough to fill in all the even bits. You can see I also went over the small raised areas where the molding is on the front. It went down no problem. I just used my fingernail to scrape it and push it down into that detail. You can then smooth it very gently with your hand. You don't need to use a burnishing pad. I'm just making sure that there's no 
bubbles in my transfer. So if you do have a bubble, you can poke it with a sharp knife, an X-Acto knife, and make sure that it's removed. But mostly this detail on this transfer is quite small, so I didn't have enough of a big space to worry about air bubbles. So once I filled the front part of my secretary, I took one of the sheets and put it down onto the desk part of the secretary, just into the little corner here on the left-hand side. I will seal this entire transfer with Dixie Bell's Wax in Clear. I have a separate brush, a Bestang brush that I keep just for wax. I actually wrote on the handle, this is my wax brush, so that I don't mix it up with the other ones. I just gently apply that wax in a circular motion, making sure to go back over it and smooth it out. And then I actually applied another coat of wax after this first one had dried. I coated this entire piece with my wax in clear because I still wanna get in here and add a little bit more detail with my gilding wax and my Bestang wax in black or brown, whatever your choice. So now I'm gonna to start to add some shading. This Best Dang's wax is a water-based wax, so I like to use baby wipes. I apply it a little heavy-handed, and then using a damp baby wipe, I can wipe it back and get it to the consistency and the shading that I love. I really think that this is the most effective way for me to use wax. I then don't have to worry about blending any lines or details. The baby wipe kind of does the hard work for you. Also, handy dandy tip of the day, you know I throw in a handy dandy tip in every single video. I find my baby wipes at the dollar store. <laughs> so since they only cost a buck 25 now, the dollar store has gone up a whole quarter. Um, for $1.25, a pack of baby wipes lasts me a really, really long time. I tend to turn it as I'm cleaning and moving it around so that I'm not spreading the wax in too many directions. It's been a couple of days since I stained this interior part of the secretary, so now it's dry. I'm just gonna slide it back into place and then put the drawer in. I kept all the original hardware for this piece and it looks fabulous. So speaking of original hardware, the hardware handles were a different shade than the hardware keyhole, but that's an easy fix. I didn't want to spray paint them gold because I felt like that would look much too bright for the vintage charm of this piece. I ended up using my gold gilding wax and applied it with a small brush to make both the hardware from the top and the bottom match cohesively. So since this gilding wax from Dixie Belle is actually an oil-based wax, it's gonna harden and cure on its own. There's no need to seal it. You can buff it back if you like, but I just let it get hard for approximately 12 to 24 hours, and you can put it right back on the piece, easy peasy. 
I also made sure to gild the nails after I attached the hardware to the secretary. So that completes my secretary. What do you guys think of the new vintage post transfer? It turned out beautifully. I love the muted tones, the added gold. I even added gilding wax to the actual transfer to just kind of dress it up a little bit more. These neutral tones and this vintage look just shine on the secretary. Add in some beautiful, charming gold hardware and some vintage books. And this piece is now fairy tale fabulous. Thanks for joining me on my painting journey. I'll see you again next week.